Okay, so uh, one of the last remaining steps, at least in the, the gear train, is to install the pump. Now, I've already got the pump put together. We'll lube up the ceiling rings and the snout here. It's going to go inside there. But first, I want to talk about what's going on sort of inside the transmission. So, you're going to have a new gasket. All right, it's paper, it's got all these holes. You're going to have to figure out exactly how to align it up so you can see inside the transmission case. Are you down in here? You can see all these holes and rectangles and stuff, which is how the fluid flows from the case to the pump. So there's really only one way it goes. We get it lined up there nice and good. Right. You'll have a small opportunity to tweak it, um, but the, more, the better you get it fit early, the better off you are. Okay. Next is the fiber thrust washer. Um, you can set it on top of this direct drum here or you can have it right on top of the pump. I find that it's easier to put it on top of the pump. Use a little assembly lube to kind of glue it into place. Just smear that chunk on there. You don't need too much. I probably actually have too much here. And put it over the reactor sh reaction shaft on the pump. Okay. So now, last thing we'll do is we'll put a little ATF on the rings and the snout. All this stuff is going to get lubed up before you even know it once the thing runs. It's always good to sort of prime it. Okay. Now, when I put the pump in, one thing I like to do is I like to have a like a Phillips head screwdriver, one that's like skinny enough to go through the holes because it helps me get it all lined up right. So we're going to flip it over and I also have an idea of how it's going to go. Um, if you can look at the outside of the pump, here's the pump um, breather hole. That goes somewhere around one o'clock-ish. So I know it's going to go something like this. So I have some idea of how it's going to fit in there. And I'll just run one of these a screwdriver so it fits through this hole and it's going to slide right in. This input shaft is going to come right out and there we go. But if you've been living right, it'll kind of drop right in. Right? But it's always a good idea to make sure that your holes are lined up. I feel I'm not quite lined up so you can slide it a little bit. All right, now we'll test fit some of these bolts. All right. Okay, so once you get the pumps sort of lined up, and and I'm pretty confident I've got it lined up how I like it. So there's a little bit of coercion from Big Orange. I'll have to drop into place. You'll know it's in when it'll sit below this um, sort of chamfer. What you don't want to do is use the pump bolts to draw the pump down into the case because the case is made out of aluminum and the pump is made out of steel. And um, one is going to give before the other and it won't be in the order that you like. Okay. So now the pump bolts come with these ceiling washers. So can you see that? A little ceiling washer here. Y'all having fun? Yep. And now you're on camera. <laughs> My daughter just got her license. She's been driving her PJ. And she's discovering firsthand that it's hot in Texas and her dad hasn't fixed her air conditioner yet. What are you going to do? So your rebuild kit should come with new ceiling washers, so you just slide it right over. Now these passages don't um, actually connect to any fluid passages, so you don't need to put Teflon tape or anything on them. So sort of finger tighten. If it fights you, back it off, make sure you're lined up right. What you do not want to do is strip out one of these uh, bowl holes. You can ask me how I know.
Torque spec on these is 175 inch pounds. And now I'll give you a fair warning. The factory service manual has the spec right. The ATSG uh, rebuild manual says it's 175 foot pounds. Do not do 175 foot pounds. Um, you will bust the heads right off the bolts. Also, before you torque them down, I'm not even close to torque yet, um, you do want to make sure that the input shaft will turn because this pump does ride on the direct drum, so if it's too tight, the clearance isn't right, um, you can bind everything up. So remember, this is the what they call the pump support. This actually goes in the torque converter. This is the input shaft. So I'm able to turn that, and then I'm able to turn the output shaft and see it turn. And it turns pretty easily, so we don't have any sort of clearance problems, at least that I can identify. Now your pump's in. Check one last time for movement. We are good to go. Alright, that's how you put the pump in.